We are back in the living room for Live from the Living Room. And this week's gonna be a little bit different. Yes. Because Amy, what are we talking about today in church? We're talking about singleness. And we had a conversation before we went live for Live from the Living Room. And this is a sensitive topic for a lot of people in church. Yes. Do you resonate with that, Amy? 100%. Even as you're looking at me right now, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy, you are 27 years old. Yes. You are single like a Pringle, ready to mingle. And, well, I, I put that word in your mouth. I prophesy that you're ready to date. <laughs> but I think that this is so important because we don't really talk about the topic of singleness in the church. So Amy, in like in one or two sentences, what have you heard about singleness or what have you felt about being single in church? Okay, so around the church topic, I feel like it's something that we are to strive for and something, honestly, as the first question that usually ask is, are you married or yeah. are you dating or, or what's the circle around that? Even coming from a Christian college context, there was a saying, a ring before spring. Ring before spring. You yep. know, uh -huh. and so that has always been part of my, in my Christian context of it's of high importance, yes. you should care about it, and yeah. if you're not in it, then what are you doing? And also, what's wrong with you? And so yeah. today, uh, in service, and we're gonna be discussing on the podcast, and I'm gonna turn the interview over to you in a second, but I think this is important as we talk about, are you scared, are you scared? Your face is a little nervous, yeah. but we, we're, gonna put, we're not gonna put yeah. you out to roast, we're yeah. not gonna put you out to roast today. <laughs> But the reason why I'm passionate about singleness is yeah. because it was a message that I felt was missing in Christianity. Mm -hmm. The only message we had was this elevated view of marriage while demoting singleness. Yes. And it was almost like when I was single at 26, 27, 28, 29, it was like, oh, wow, your singleness is like a disease. And people were praying for me to, to find someone as if I was in this spiritual purgatory that needed to be prayed out of. And I don't want that narrative. What we opened up the word of God today and took a look at was when Paul the Apostle says, singleness is a gift, he puts that in tandem with marriage. Marriage is a gift, but singleness as a gift. Yeah. So what are we doing with the gift of singleness? So today we opened up a can, we opened up the theology of singleness. Mm -hmm. We mentioned some Tim Keller because Amy, you and I love Tim, Tim Keller. Keller. Shout out to Tim, NYC, we love you. We love you, Tim yes. Keller. Um, but he really framed a lot of the theology that we discussed today, as well as we heard from two different voices. Yes. The reason I'm passionate about that is because when we talk about singleness, it's usually from someone who's married. And though it's good, I wanted to give space and place for single voices to be heard. So let's dive in, Amy. Yeah, and, and you know, for me, I really felt it in that way as well because it's almost like we don't, we wanna talk about it like, let, this is how we get you married when we talk about right. singleness. Right. And I, it was something refreshing to hear. Um, even Darius, if you guys have a chance to hear his testimony and, and Kaylee's, when they talked about their testimonies of, I'm fully me even in this season. Yes. I can fully experience God. I can fully experience my calling. And my fear is, is when I talk about this from a, a ministry or a Christian perspective or a ministry perspective that I can come off as being bitter or saying, you know, like, oh no, I already, I already have me or I'm already full or I'm already this. But I'm just a ardent believer that God has me in this season for a reason. Yeah. And I'm 27 and single for a reason. And, and you kind of hinted at it when you talked about Paul, where Paul says, I wish you were all like this because when you're married, you know, your interests are divided. Yeah. And so I've really seen me as a 27 year old, like my mind is not focused on that. And if I'm gonna be really honest with all of you guys here, maybe there's all of you guys are my boat. I've always felt like, okay, God, what's wrong with me that my mind isn't there? Mm. What's wrong with me that I feel okay? And I, it, Darius kind of talked about it this way, that, that it's like you're working out your salvation. Mm. And I feel that over the course of this last, I've been in ministry for nine years, I've worked out my singleness with God. Yeah. And I found contentment in God. And because I found contentment in God, I was never scared to be alone because I know that I'm not alone. I was never scared to have something missing because I know that I'm not missing anything. And so now that I'm in this place where I can finally say, I'm ready for that, but God, let it be your will, not mine. Let it be your timing, not mine. And that's not a common stance for a lot of Christians no. right now. And so that's why I even hesitated, like I was confessing to her and I'll confess to you guys, I've never really talked about singleness online because I said, God, I, I want to fully realize that chapter of my life before I ever even speak about it. So let's talk about singleness. Let's yeah. talk about the theology of singleness. So when Paul talks about singleness, I love that uh, when we look at this holistically, specifically in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, which yeah. is what we dove into today at church. We want you to go and watch it online. 
when he, Paul speaks about it, he starts off with, I wish that you were like me. Yeah. And then he alludes to both marriage and singleness being a gift. And why is that? The theology behind it is that this on this earth, this moment on earth is temporary. Marriage isn't the prize. Mm. Our, we are looking, we are striving, we are aiming for a life with Christ. If you are a believer, and I know this, if you're watching online and you're not sure how you feel about Christianity, this might feel a little foreign, but if you're familiar with the Drake lyric, YOLO, you only <laughs> live once, it's actually theologically not correct if you're a believer because we believe that we live beyond what, when our bodies go into the ground, that our soul is with the Lord. Now, if that is the case, everything here is fleeting, which is what Paul said. Yeah. All of this is fleeting. So he says, if you are a man, if you are single, then your mind is solely focused on serving the Lord. If you're a single woman, your mind is solely focused on serving the Lord. Yeah. If you're married, you have your interests that are divided. So Paul really is giving language and not putting marriage above singleness or singleness above marriage. Yeah. But hey, both of these are a gift from God. So what did you walk away with in the message that you feel like is pertinent to those watching online that you were like, as a 27 year old single woman who is fulfilled, who is content, what is something that you're holding on to and applying to your life? That I can still fully live in my calling and not mm -hmm. putting God on a timeline. Yeah. And I feel that uh, I was actually sp uh, speaking to somebody yesterday. We went to a conference yesterday and the, uh, one of the girls was like, I realized that through ministry, I can still f fully serve God even as a single person. Yeah. And, I, and she said, prior when I was 20 years old, I would say, God, by 25, I want to be married. By 27, I want to have kids. And, and, and we're scared of... Uh, Darius actually said this, that sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm too old or I'm too used yeah. up or I'm yeah. too this. And it was really like a debunking of fears and debunking of insecurities to say, none of those things really matter in, in the way that God works. So what I walked away with the most was, you can still fully be you and what God called you to do even in this season. Of singleness, yep, yeah. absolutely. And, and I wanna throw something at you. I yeah. actually asked online, I was like, what questions do we have about singleness? And so many of the questions had to do with fear in specific in mm. fear of missing out or if i don't focus on this person i'm going to miss out on what god has for me and so for singles from my perspective i think it's mainly a fear of i'm missing out on what god actually has for me and the person asked what do i do in the in-between of god i want to be fully present with you but I still fully have this desire. How do we live in that in between? You know, I'm gonna encourage and use this language that my dad gave me. He said, you know what? You have to have an eyes of a gecko. It's like you have your eyes focused on Jesus, but every once in a while you got like one crazy eye that looks around. Is anyone running the race with you? Yeah. I like that. I like that, that, that kind of uh, visual because as we're chasing after the things of Christ, we're not gonna waste our life waiting, wandering and wishing for someone to come and rescue us, someone to come and tap us on the shoulder and say, I choose you. You have already been chosen by God. Wow. You've already been chosen. And so if we, if we walk in the assurance and the confidence, I'm a chosen child of God, then that thirsty, those people that walk around parched and dehydrated, I'm so single, I want someone to come rescue me. Honey, drink the living water and pick your head up, okay? You're yeah. chosen, you're wanted, you're desired. What do we do in the meantime? We don't waste our life. Mm. If Paul encourages us out of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that time is fleeting and all this is going to be a waste, I'm not going to waste my life wondering when Prince Charming is going to come along, wondering when my Proverbs 31 woman is going to come along. I'm going to be busy about my Lord's business. And yeah. you live this out really well, Amy. I'm going to affirm you. You're 27. You are chasing after the things of Jesus. You are here at church. You're serving in this ministry. It's not stopping you. Uh, from doing anything the Lord is calling you to do. Yeah. Now, what Paul says is, hey, if you get married, your interests are gonna be divided. You're gonna spend more time. Yeah. So how do we leverage this time? What do we do in the waiting? I don't wanna, I'm gonna pause for a second because I feel like someone out there is gonna hear this and then they're gonna feel really sad, like, but I'm lonely and I want mm. to go on dates and I want to be wanted. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't want you to waste your life in the waiting. I want us to know in the waiting, I'm gonna be busy about the Lord's business. There's things that you can do when you're single that you might not be able to do when you're married. When I was single, I had a two-seater convertible. I didn't have any kids to tow around. I was like, I'm gonna hop in this car, it's just me and Jesus. <laughs> Literally, it's just me and Jesus. You know what else I did? I studied Japanese. Why? Because I led a group of kids from East LA to Japan five times. Ego kawa karimasuka. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? In that moment, I, I went back to grad school. I was like, I'm not gonna waste my time for someone to make me feel valuable. I'm gonna add to the value of my life. I went to grad school. I don't wanna waste the time of singleness. 
wishing, wondering, and waiting for someone to choose me. Yeah. My encouragement, my word of exhortation is don't waste the season. Let this season be used for the glory of God. I think you're doing a great job at it. And I, I want to know, what, do you, what are people doing in their time of waiting in singleness that is worthy? Yeah. That's worthy. Not be thirsty. That's worthy. Put it in the chat box. We yeah. want to know. You know, I actually had to wrestle through that for a long time um, because I would. Use, I used to think if I did anything significant in ministry, I, I would tell God I would have to be married at that point. Mm. I, I'd say you can use me in the in between, in the way that you feel possible. And now you would say, but anything when I say significant, I mean if you ever consider me to pastor, Lord. Let me do it married. Girl, let me ask you a question. Was Paul married? No. Was Daniel married? No. Was Jesus married? No. Shut your face. I know. All right? All right, because someone online needs to hear that word. Your worth is not going to come when you have a wedding ring. Yeah. When you say, I do, it doesn't give you permission to do. You do it right now. Yeah. And we have been told, intentionally or unintentionally by the church, that we won't be able to lead, that we won't be able to do ministry unless we have a significant other. Yeah. That's contrary to some of the characters that we see in the Bible. Now. I'm going to pause and say, I do love doing ministry with my husband, but one of the dangers that Timothy Kelly, uh, Tim Ke Keller had told us, one of the dangers is that you can make your spouse, you're all sufficient. You can look at your spouse and idol. idolize them mm -hmm. and say, you are going to make me whole. You are going to complete me. You're going to make me happy. That only comes from Jesus Christ. So there's a danger in getting married, though I love it. There's a danger in looking at Matt as completing me and giving me all the things that I want. And that's contrary to the word of God. You know, and even when we frame the, the words, I'm in a season of waiting, uh, we, at, at times we focus more on the waiting more than the word season. Season means that it's fleeting and it's passing. And so I made a commitment to God where I was like, God, in this season that you've given me, I'm never going to get this season back. I'm never going to be right. single like this back. If God wills one day when I have kids or, or one day if I'm married, my interests are going to shift doesn't mean that one's better than the other is just shifted yes so i've always believed i said okay god if you have me in this season of singleness then you can have me fully you can have me completely all my interests belong to you my heart my mind my soul my gifting my calling god all that i am is yours i'm not gonna wait on anything or anyone to be a knight in shining armor to come in and tell me what i am when god already told me whose i am and what i'm going to do yeah. and so i want to encourage you that even as you're in this season of singleness don't think about it as a wait think about it more as even here god in this season i want to use this gift fully i want to experience the depths of it so you can use me however you want to use me i actually love what darren said that um we're actually becoming less of a headache for someone else because we don't realize <laughs> that god is preparing us in the in-between yes and yes. allowing god to refine us pastor b um i actually really love when you speak about singleness because uh I'm gonna be real in the house of God. Sometimes I, I it's hard for me to hear from a 19 year old, you know, like <laughs> that got the the ring in spring. Yeah. Um, you know, about what the waiting is like. No, hey, I'm just saying, like it's hard for me to hear. I remember being 28 years old, and there was this couple that came in to speak to youth ministry, and he was 19 and she was 18, and they wrote a book called Waiting for the One. And I, in my mind, mind, I was thinking, how long was your wait, honey? Two seconds? Because I'm literally 10 years older and I am single as all get out. I didn't get asked out. Like, I was just like, you waited for nothing, babe. And so hearing that message from someone who hasn't gone through it doesn't hold the same weight. Yeah. It doesn't hold the same weight. So in the waiting, what are you hearing? In the waiting, what I'm hearing is fully, fully, fully live your life for God. And don't wait on anyone or anything or a label to tell you who you are. Because even here and even now, you can be all that God wants you to be. And now, you know, Darius pointed out community, communi communication, communication and, and Christ. Jesus Christ. Yep. And so revolve your, th your, your life around those things and you're going to see there's so much joy to experience. Yeah. And joy is not going to come in the form of a person. Joy has already come in the form of Jesus Christ. So get to know Jesus, be in intimacy with him, and you'll get to know all the fullness that is available for you. And for someone out there that is desirous of serving the Lord in the full context of ministry, I will say as someone who married someone in ministry, I didn't know I needed someone as strong as Pastor Matt. I didn't know I needed someone that has such fortitude like him. I would have run him over to be, I, I would have run any other person over. But when you are chasing after the things of the Lord, you're serving in ministry, your eyes are focused on the Lord. When you look to the left, you see who is running at my pace and who's running in my space. Mm. That's a potential partner. And that was Matt Oltoff, and I'm so glad that the Lord gave me him.
So you would say God knows the desires of your heart, even as you're running with him? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Sorry, um, Mom. I said freaking. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor V, can you pray for all of us singles and all of us that are in absolutely, absolutely. seasons? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you and I pray for every single person that is listening to this conversation. Our singleness isn't outside of the context of marriage or in the context of marriage. We are individuals that you have crafted and fashioned. And so will you speak to our singularity and when you call us to rise, Will you stir up new gifts in us, new understanding in us? May we see you in different ways. May we not look at anyone else to complete us, but our completion comes in you. Our all-sufficiency comes in an all-sufficient God. Bless those that are listening. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you for this house. And bless the people that make this house their home. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you again next week. Bye, guys.